What's going on today, guys? It's August. We're going to talk a little bit about a hard to control weed. This is goosegrass and a little bit of a project I've had going on for about a month, treating some right here at uh, home base here at PPC Toe Turf Labs. But I tried some combinations of some different products and uh, I'll show you the results on them. It's not exactly scientific because it's hard for me to get these uh, rates dialed in to spray out of a backpack because some of them are really low use rate uh, products. But anyway, that's a, that's a goose grass. This one is out of the yard here. So it's been getting mowed twice a week at, uh, you know, close to an inch and a half or so. But uh, it lends pretty well to getting low mode as far as for the goose grass's health because it starts to tiller out a whole lot as you can see on this one. If you've got one that's just been left growing wild, they get kind of big without a lot of leaves. I want to say tillers, I mean the leaves. But uh, as it gets tighter like this, it loses some of that uh, identity power you have on it because that, that white center circle right here is how you usually identify them but like i say this one's this one's kind of kind of harder to see that in but i mean it's, it lays out flat like this and spreads across and it uh has uh gets a lot of seeds on i don't have any with the seed head on it here to show you because we're mowing this so much but it does spread due to its seed but uh there's goosegrass, and we'll talk about some control options. All right, it's been super dry here, and it's hot right now. At least the sun went in for a second, but I don't irrigate this a whole lot, but I've set up one of my seed buster 5000s out here because i just mowed it and it's looking a little all heat stress but enough about my yard my yard is <laughs> we'll talk about it some more though my yard is mostly uh monaco bermuda with some uh common mixed in with it an, an older variety of common that's been here for years so i should have just killed the whole thing off and tried to do it all monaco when i when i did redo it and i'll try to show you a close-up of why that is and how different the two grass types look at how differently they respond to a lot of drought stress too. The Monaco holds up a lot better than the older common variety. All right, so goose grass control. Um, the, the most effective thing would be a pre-emergent for it, but in a residential turf, I can't get, I, or I have not had a lot of success with just a uh, typical split per diamine application. Goose grass germinates kind of late, so if I was probably if I was trying to get this done with a uh, all my neighbors are out mowing all of a sudden you must have seen me do it and got inspired. Anyway, a typical uh, prodiamine application, you know, the first of the year, January, February, if you get down half the rate or three quarters of the rate, and then come back later in the spring with another application, and it's super effective against a lot of broadleaf weeds, crabgrass, that kind of thing but I have trouble getting it to work with goose grass. If uh, I have, you know, <coughs> gone through the winter with my yard uh, with not overseeded, meaning I didn't have ryegrass, it was nothing green in it in the winter and it was dormant, and we're able to put down a uh, flumey oxygen or uh, shore guard uh, pre-emergent, and that seemed to work okay on it. In the sports turf, though, we can use uh, oxydiazinone or Ronstar and that is probably your best bet in goosegrass but it is not uh, legal or, or, or labeled for residential turf so we can't use oxydiazinone on your residential turf but in the sports turfs even if they're overseeded um, we can use a granular and put down and then water that in and it, it works fine uh, the reason being the oxydiazinone is a non-selective herbicide as well as a pre-emergent so if you were to spray that on rye grass or actively growing uh turf it'll kill it but the great thing and why we need this oxidazin on a ronstar so much in sports turf is because it is not a root pruner uh 
in in home lawns we don't need as strong roots as you do on a playing surface uh, so we could get away with other pre-emergence in a home lawn but say on a football field or soccer field that oxidizenone diaznon bronze star you could put that down and it's going to keep you from getting goosegrass crabgrass lots of things especially goosegrass but it will not weaken the roots in the turf and so a sports field that say you could not use Ronstar on, uh, like a football field, you probably wouldn't have any grass between the hash marks, you know, down about the, the 30 yard line or so, it'd be bare dirt between the hash marks. Same thing in front of your soccer goals and stuff. But with the uh, use of oxidazenone as your pre-emergent, you're gonna get good weed control, good strong uh, roots in that turf. Same thing with, uh, Shore guard. Uh, shore guard is not a root pruner. It, it doesn't seem to last. It's, it's not as effective as oxidizing on goosegrass, but it it is better than a perdiamine in that respect. Um, and it uh, it also is a non-selective herbicide on green growing grass. All right. Well, there's your your goosegrass pre-emergent talk. Uh, but what we've done here today is I've got some post-emergent uh, experiments I'm doing on it. It's, it's pretty hard to kill post-emergent, um, but we've, we've, uh, we've certainly waxed it here in some instances and beat it up in some others. And I'll try to show you some clips of what I did here now. This is from about four weeks ago. Here's some crazy stuff for you. I sprayed this goose grass with a combination of pilot and sulfentra zone at eight o'clock this morning. And it's uh, 645 now. This is uh, grass, pilot, sulfentra zone combination test. Bermuda seems to have fared pretty well through it. Some of the goose grass is further along than others as far as cricking out. Okay, here we are at one week in my <laughs> in my Pilex uh, sulfentra zone goose grass eradication experiment. Oh boy. Things I do for science. And you. I think my yard would be better off if I moved away. I think it's safe to say this this will work, but you just gotta get the uh Pilex rate right. Because <laughs> the uh goosegrass definitely takes it up way more easily than the uh Bermuda grass does. Uh, some of the Bermuda is starting to recover. You can see on the little patch down there that I sprayed. <coughs> the goose grass looks very, very, very smoked. You can see that. Some smoke more than others. But I'm kind of confident it's going to get a good fair bit of the goose grass. Like right here. Like this whole little patch right here was goose grass. And I mean, it's already going back to the ground on some of them. I'm going to paint this. <laughs> I, can't, I can't look at this. I don't know how long that Bermuda is going to stay white and if it even lives. I, I think the Bermuda is going to survive and hopefully most of the goose grass won't come back. So right there. Look kind of I don't know. He may make it. This is at about two weeks. A lot of the uh, white is growing out of the Bermuda grass, but it definitely killed all the crab grass. I had, a, I mean, goose grass. I had a giant goose grass crop in these thin areas. Uh, 
but it definitely thin thinned out the uh, Bermuda a little bit too. But uh, over in here, I did a lot lower rate of the uh, Pilex, and it didn't just burn up the goose grass like it did everywhere else, but it didn't discolor the uh, Bermuda either. But the little goose grass plants are still stuck in there, bleached out. Like I said, this is about two weeks. And there's some right there that even recovered. Let's see if get this. Some small goose grass sticking up in there. But the Bermuda is starting to recover. I, where I painted it in the front, it's starting to grow out of all that too. I'll show you that. The front's looking pretty close to good. I'm waiting for that to fill in. It needs to rain. But up here in this area, I had, <laughs> I had bleached out from about right here to the street. I painted it, but it, uh, even the paint is not really showing anymore. That's about all the white I got left in. It's going to be fine. The application there that made everything all white was uh, Topramazone, also known as Pilex, at about a quarter ounce per acre, combined with about six ounces an acre of uh, Dismiss or Sulfentrazone. They're the same thing, it's just a different name for it. All right, but why, you know, where I had the problem is measuring out a quarter ounce per acre to go in a backpack to spot spray these to test it. So uh, one application was pretty hot. It was probably more than a quarter ounce per acre. And it, uh, it turned everything white as you can see, but as you'll see in the follow-up videos after about four weeks, the Bermuda grass recovered and started filling in, but the goose grass was Dunzo. I mean, zero goose grass. Some of the other applications, like I, I did a lower rate, and I, I would like to say that that rate was closer to a quarter ounce an acre of uh, Topramazone or Pilex and your six ounces of Dismiss. <clears throat> I, but again, I'm not 100% sure because that's really hard for me to measure out that low rate to go in a backpack. And what it did was it'll turn these tips white on the goose grass and uh they just it just stays frozen that way for weeks on end so on some of it what i did was i came back and sprayed our second uh experimental mix here on some of the goose grass that was just frozen out in a with white tips and it smoked it to oblivion and didn't didn't ding up the turf quite as bad although there is a pretty fair amount of turf discoloration along with this application too and I'll show you a little bit of that right here. All right, this is about week three of goose grass versus uh, Pilex and Sulfentrazone. And uh, this little stretch right here is where I had a mega infestation. I mean, it, the Bermuda is starting to recover from it. It doesn't look as bad as it does on the camera for some reason. Don't look great, but <laughs> the goose grass is definitely gone. But as you can see, there was a lot of collateral damage in that. The Bermuda was thin in here anyway. Um, it, 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 it didn't kill that much grass. There was a lot of bare area in there anyhow. So I wanted to get the goose grass out to try to promote this Bermuda to run into these spots. And up here, the grass was thicker, but I did a lot lower rate of Pilex in it, and it didn't really discolor Bermuda, but the uh, goose grass, three weeks later, still just sitting in there white, just kind of white tips just kind of hanging out. I don't think it is going to kill that goose grass. I think it's going to recover from that. Yikes. Over here in the side yard, I found another goose grass patch you see there's kind of a recurring theme where i got uh <laughs> bad goose grasses turf isn't that strong kind of shaded out for the most part i mean the 
got some spots up by the front driveway, probably by where they've been getting driven over and then, you know, moderate plants here and there just because, but anyway, we're gonna do uh, Metribuzin and uh, dismiss uh, Sulfentrazone on these, so Simcor and see what we get with this. Goosegrass experiment number two in Bermuda. Goosegrass. And in the section that I sprayed with the light application of Pilex and I've still got white goosegrass hanging out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and treat this with the sulfon core too and see what happens. Glutton for punishment. What the uh, second experimental one was, was about six ounces of uh, Simcor or Metribuzin, along with about six ounces per acre of uh, of uh, Dismiss, Sulfentrazone. And uh, it, it seems pretty effective, a little bit of turf discoloration, but, but that's only been down for about a week. So we'll, we'll take a look at what a week's worth of uh, killing. I've got one right here actually that I pulled up. That's a week after a uh, sulfentrazone metribuzin application, and it's it's pretty dead. Um, and and I'll show you some turf discoloration from it. In all these places where I have these major goosegrass crops, the turf is a little thin in these areas, and uh, these high-powered herbicides going on them. Uh, don't do that thin turf any favors either. It kind of knocks it back some too, but it is definitely recovering in the instance of the Pilex Sulfentrazone application. Let's go look at some. Okay, I mean, I know this still does not look spectacular, but this is the area that was completely bleached out white and it was slapped full of goose grass, but it, it it's, it's dead, man. There is. There's one carcass still hanging out, but I mean most of the carcasses are even gone by now There's some there's some more carcass. There's there's a goose grass Maybe that's has emerged since or escaped My application, but anyway, I right, move forward here. These are some Areas where we were spot spraying the uh, Metribuzin Metribuzin you water that in too by the way after the application but you can see the discoloration of goose grass is, is gone out of these areas, it appears to be anyway. And if you remember, I had some bleaching out there in the other video where I had sprayed it. Let's go to the main area I sprayed with the uh, sulfon cool. Okay, and these, I sprayed these with a combination product that's already mixed together of the uh, Metribuzin and Sulfentrazone called Sulfon Core. Uh, I left the, the edges, I did not spray them on purpose to show you a contrast. There is goose grass and what the turf looked like beforehand. And pull over here and that has been treated. I actually, I did not water this in, but it rained the next day. You are supposed to water that application in, but it rained the next day or even maybe even that night, I can't remember, but it seemed to have gotten with it. So I think that that is going to be pretty successful. I'm sitting here editing this and it didn't occur to me, I don't think I said it, but these, these are Bermuda grass control options, goose grass control in Bermuda grass. All right. Get back to that was just a couple of them. Um, I've also done it with uh, at like a sulfentrazone and uh, a revolver on goose grass. Uh, we've uh, done tenacity and uh, uh, sulfentrazone, tenacity and metribuzin. They all seem to get it if you can get the rate right and you're lucky but uh, this time of year these harder control weeds sometimes can be a little difficult because they are so vigorously growing they will grow that herbicide damage right out of them and uh recover and we saw that a lot with the uh tenacity application and you especially see it 
if you just use one product, one mode of action. Uh, like if you just did it with Pilex and didn't put the sulfentra zone in, uh, if you get the Pilex rate high enough, it'll it'll smoke your goosegrass. But if you uh, combine the products, you'll lessen up a little bit of how much damage you do to the Bermuda grass, and you'll get a better kill on the goosegrass, and you will. Uh, definitely decrease the uh what's the word i'm looking for the risk of uh of herbicide resistance and herbicide resistance is a real thing yet we try to always avoid just going out with with one specific product and spraying something you always want to combine products with different modes of action to to hit at it from a different way and really really control that weed and we want to go with a full rate to kill it and you don't want to just ding it up and have it recover because you kind of you kind of letting it build a tolerance that way in my opinion and it'll eventually be uh be resistant to that herbicide a little bit about the different look of the bermudas this is actually tiff tough right here and then you can see i never had my yard like sodded sodded i just like would have patches left over from doing a job or something stick them in the yard and that's a more of a common bermuda i think this is a blackjack from years ago and then into the tiff tough now keep in mind what this tiff tough looks like and we're going to go look at the uh monica in the front i don't irrigate my yard very often but it was looking so tortured after i mowed a little while ago i had to break out a sprinkler all right, let's get a close up on some of this Monaco. Here's the Monaco. That looks great to me. As you can tell, it's holding up to the drought pretty well. I mean, this has been super hot and dry here. And it's hanging in there. I mean, you can see what some of the other yards look like as far as uh, just heat stress. See, there's a little bit of common right there mixed in with it. And it it really sticks out. It looks crappy, but. Well, we had this spring actually made some pretty significant uh, leaps in the uh, Monaco versus the common in the yard, the areas that had both in it the uh the cool weather the common just didn't want to green up and plus the herbicides i used to take my ryegrass out it just really didn't recover from that very fast so the uh monaco came out first and spent more time spreading and establishing before the uh common came back out but i've had this stuff down for a few years now and I mean, I'm not going to redo the yard, but if I had it to do all over again, I would definitely try to get the whole thing right in Monica, uh, just kill the whole thing and, and redo it. Easier said than done, but no irrigation. Huh. Again, you can see the serious knockdown power of the high rate of uh, pilots combined with uh, soil venture zone. I'd say I was more at like a half ounce per acre, uh, maybe even more on that application, but I had some significant uh, turf damage <laughs> to go along with it. But the turf is recovering fine now, and there is there is absolutely no goosegrass in there, so that's a winner. And I think the uh, uh, sulfentra zone metribuzin combination is good, and the pilex metribuzin combination is good. I just I just didn't do any this year. All right check you out in the next one. I appreciate you guys watching. Hit me up if you got any questions and I'll try to make something up to answer.